welcome to my channel! In this video, I'm gonna teach you a lesson about pressure, a topic from Science Form 2. Topic number 8.2, the effect of force. Let's jump into a situation where you have a thumbnail and a stack of coins placed on a soft pot laying flat on the surface of a table. Soon after that, for some reason, you feel like pushing them with your thumb against the board. Which one do you think will penetrate the board? Yes, exactly with 100% for sure. This will be the case in the real situation. But do you really know the science concept that causes these things to happen? The main factor behind the science concept for this situation is the surface area where the objects are in contact with the board. If you observe the situation closely, the surface area is small for the thumbtack but relatively bigger for the stack of coins. This shows that the effect of force acting on an object depends on the factor of the size of surface area where the force is applied. When we have an amount of force acting over a size of surface area, we could get a derived physical quantity called pressure. Pressure is defined as normal force per surface area. The SI unit for pressure is Pascal. One Pascal is equivalent to one Newton per meter square, which simply means for one Pascal pressure, we need an amount of one Newton force acting perpendicularly on a one meter square surface area. In order to give a sense of meaning for this, let's deal with some numbers, shall we? Let's say the value of the small area at the tip of the thumbnail is 1 mm squared, and the value of the big area of the coin surface is 30 mm squared. To make a fair theoretical analysis, Let's say we apply the same amount of force for both the thumbnail and the coins. Let it be 10 Newton. From the definition of pressure, P equals to force over a surface area, the value of pressure by the coin on the board is 0 0.33 Newton per millimeter squared, which is a small number and we can interpret it as low pressure. The same calculation is also carried out for the pressure by the thumbnail on the board and we get the value 10 Newton per millimeter squared, a relatively bigger number and we can interpret it as a high pressure. Therefore, in this context, we can conclude that high pressure causes the surface to be able to penetrate the board and low pressure causes the surface unable to penetrate the board. Mm -hmm. 
there are a lot of pressure applications in our daily life. For example, the thin metal blade at the sole of a skating boot. The thin metal blade is necessary to produce high pressure on the ice surface when the skier is skating. The high pressure produces a thin layer of liquid in between the blade and the ice surface so that the skier can ski on the ice smoothly. Next is the broad size of a tractor wheels. They are made big and wide in order to support the weight of the tractor and preventing it from sinking into the ground. Next in the list is the sharp edge of a knife. It is purposely made very thin to produce high pressure on the objects to be cut. So you don't need to use a lot of effort when you are doing cutting or slicing. Once we understand about the basic of pressure, the understanding about the other types of pressure is just in vicinity. The gas pressure, for example, is also resulted from the effect of an amount of force acting on a surface. Before we could understand how it will come about, let's have a closer look at how gaseous particles behaving at microscopic level. As you can see, the animation demonstrates the behavioral movements of gas particles. By the kinetic theory of gas, the air molecules are constantly moving freely and randomly in all directions, hitting onto one another and also hitting on the wall of the container. The air molecules that continuously hitting the container wall produces a large force onto it. This force that exerting on the surface is practically known as the air pressure inside the enclosed container. Two factors that influence the value of the air pressure inside an enclosed container are the volume of the container and the temperature of the air inside the container. Atmospheric pressure applies the same concept as the gas pressure. It's just that the gas we are dealing with is not enclosed in a container. Atmospheric pressure refers to the air that are free to move around and flow outside an enclosed space. By definition, Atmospheric pressure refers to the pressure by the gases in the atmosphere onto the surface of the earth and every single thing on its surface. The arrows represent the continuous pressure exerted on every single point on the earth's surface. There are a lot of human innovations that apply the concept of air and atmospheric pressure in our life. For example, the plunger. When a plunger is pushed against a wet, smooth surface, it became hard to be pulled off. To explain the situation, when the plunger is pressed, the air inside the dome-shaped rubber is forced to escape. This makes the amount of air particles inside it become less than it were. Then, this creates a low pressure region inside the space. While at the same time, the pressure by the atmosphere is higher from the outside, pressing the rubber dome. This pressure imbalance makes the plunger sticks to the surface and hard to be pulled off.
Next example is sipping drinks from a straw. When a person sips a drink from a straw, he will suck the air above the surface of the water in the straw column first. This creates a low gas pressure inside the straw. Meanwhile, the water level outside the straw is exposed to the atmospheric pressure. Due to pressure imbalance, the water is being forced to get into the straw channel. Next pressure application is pouring liquid from an airtight can. When a hole is punched at one point on the top surface of a can, the content bursts out at instant at first. After a few seconds, the content will stop flowing out. This is because the high atmospheric pressure is resisting the content from flowing out. To solve the problem, another hole is punched at the opposite end to allow for outside air to fill in the low pressure region inside the can and makes the gas pressure at the both holes equal. This will make the flow of the content smoother. Next, I'm going to be talking about how altitude influences the atmospheric pressure. Every single thing on this earth are subjected to the pull of gravity, including the human, the birds, the apples, and every single thing. You just name it. Also, with no exception, the air particles in the atmosphere. Based on the law of gravity, the further the object from the earth, the weaker the gravitational pull on the object. Due to that, the air particles that are very far from the Earth will experience a little less gravitational force than those near to the surface. Hence, the higher the distance from the surface of the Earth, the thinner the air particles in the air. As you can see from the graph here, at the ground level, the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeter mercury, which is a big value. When we elevate further upward, let's say we are at the top of Mount Everest with the altitude 8.85 km, the atmospheric pressure reduces to 250 millimeter mercury. Next, when we skyrocket further upward, let's say at altitude 30 km from the ground, the atmospheric pressure reduces further to almost zero. Now I want to show you the effect of atmospheric pressure at different altitude on a snack packaging.
similar to air, liquid also gives pressure. Now, let's look a little more closer into how depth underwater and pressure related. Objects in a liquid experience pressure because the weight of the liquid acts on the whole object, exerting pressure on it. The deeper the depth underwater, the higher the pressure in the water. We can see the difference in the water pressure due to the depth of water from this demonstration. Deep water creatures are various. They are created by the Almighty to be able to withstand the high pressure under the deep ocean. For example, the blobfish. The picture on the left is the look of a blobfish at 3,000 feet below the sea level. And the picture on the right is the look of a blobfish after experiencing an extreme tissue damage when being pulled rapidly by the fisher to the sea level. Wow. There are a lot of applications in human technology from the understanding of water pressure. Some of them are the wall of dam. The wall of dam is made thick near the base and relatively thinner towards the top. This is because the water pressure at the bottom of the dam is high. Therefore, the structure at the base needed to be thick to be able to overcome the high water pressure so it won't break. Next is water tank for housing. The water tank for a housing area is located high on the tower structure. And for individual house, it is located at the rooftop. In order to understand this better, let us look at this example. In all situations, the depth of water is measured from the water surface level in the tank. From the surface to the second floor of the house, the depth is small and it consequences to a low water pressure. For the first floor of the house, the depth is intermediate, thus the water pressure is medium. At the ground level, the depth is the highest, so the house residents could enjoy the highest water pressure when they are at the ground level of the house. Next is submarine. Submarine is a ship that can submerge underwater. Near the sea surface, the water pressure is small. As it goes deeper, the water pressure is increasing. Because of this, the wall of submarines are made from strong materials so that it can withstand the high pressure underwater. That's all about pressure from me in this video. I hope you keep on digging for more information from other resources. It could also come from the content of other YouTubers. And for those who haven't subscribed, please press the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so that you will be notified for every new videos I updated. Yes! Until then, hope to see you again. Adios!